Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Daniela and I am here to do my wrap up for the month of May. I read seven books in May. I did not complete my TBR. I've had to carry forward The Name of All Things and Cheered Fire Gold. I'm hoping to get to them in June now in addition to my other June books. And if I don't, I'm just going to carry them on again. I'm going to keep carrying them over until they get read because I want to make sure I'm reading the books that I roll on the TBR wheel. The whole point of that is to make sure I'm reading other books they will be read i will make sure i read them uh, they just didn't get read in may so first off i'm going to start with the audiobooks that i listened to i listened to two audiobooks this month both of them were romances the first one i listened to was better than the movies i gave it four stars we follow our main character who she is really into like rom-coms and romantic films and she basically she lives next door to this lad who she's always lived next to she can't stand him, he really annoys her. There's this other lad that she's interested in and she makes a deal with the next door neighbour and says, you need to help me like get with this guy, basically. The majority of the book follows the two and he's trying to assist her <laughs> in, in getting to a point where she can date this popular lad at school. It took me a little while to get into it, but I did eventually get into it. Uh, I was listening to it and I got very, very near the end. I had like half an hour of the audiobook left, something ridiculous. Um, and my script ran out. It was due to run out that day, but instead of finishing at like midnight, which is what you would expect, they cut me off at like 8pm. Like, I'm listening to my audiobook and it just, it just goes dead. So... I was not impressed. I was like, I was absolutely, I was so annoyed. I was like, they've cut me off. They've cut me off. I don't have my audio book. I really wanted to know how this book ended. It was right before it like all wrapped up and you found out how it ended. Not happy. So I had to get another month of script because I needed to know what happened. But overall, I really enjoyed it. It was a really, really cute romance. The ending was of course super predictable because she's obviously going to end up with the boy that she's lived next to in her entire life that she doesn't like. And that was obvious, I think, all the way through it. But it was so fun. It was so cute. And you find out, like, some stuff near the end about him basically having been in love with her his entire life anyway. And she finds out some information from her parents about how he used to, like, sit outside the house listening to her play music and stuff and it's just so adorable i really enjoyed it so i gave that four stars the next book i listened to was it happened one summer by tessa bailey this one i didn't enjoy anywhere near as much i was looking at my goodreads before i sat down and i actually downgraded the rating on this because i was looking at the rating i'd given it and comparing it to other books i'd given that rating and it based on that it, it should have been a lower rating because it didn't match up to some of the other three star books on my Goodreads. So I gave this one two stars. I just, I, I, this just one just wasn't for me. Um, I found the main character Piper quite annoying. I wasn't that interested in the male lead. The smut scenes didn't do it for me. I found them very cringy. I didn't feel the chemistry. I liked the small town setting. However, there is something that happens towards the end where he's losing faith in her, he doesn't trust her, she says, I'm gonna meet you at X place at X time, which you know isn't gonna happen. It's not. And it doesn't. And it was so predictable and obvious and it just kind of irritated me. As soon as she said it, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> She's not gonna make it. <laughs> it just fell a bit flat for me. I don't think it's that good. On my TBR this month, one of the TBR books I actually got to was Front of Glass by Sarah J Maas, which was the first book in the Front of Glass series. I had already read Assassin's Blade, which is the prequel. Really enjoyed Assassin's Blade. Absolutely fell in love with Sam. I feel like you definitely need to read the Assassin's Blade before you read these books uh, because a lot of the books reference back to Assassin's Blade a lot like a lot um so yeah it definitely it hits harder if you've read assassin's blade before you read these and assassin's blade is a set of like five novellas but they all follow on after each other and it kind of just reads like one book to be honest so i give front of glass four stars i really enjoyed it this one has a competition element to it so you get to see parts of competition there's like this huge underlying plot that goes throughout the entire series that kind of kicks off in this book. It just starts to give you teasers of what you can expect in the other books 
in this book and starts to introduce a lot of things I gave it four stars and I was enjoying it so much that I decided to continue so next up I picked up Crown of Midnight I gave this book five stars I absolutely loved it the reveals in this book were amazing <laughs> I finished this book at about 10 o'clock at night I was bouncing off the wall I was so excited I was so hyped up this book just gave me such an adrenaline rush and then it was like how am I gonna go to sleep how am I going to go to sleep after reading this book things really heat up a lot in this book and a lot happens in this book really enjoyed it I highly recommend the series it's just fun people say Sarah J Maas isn't a good writer I don't think that's true like her storytelling and her plotting and all of the twists and turns that she manages to fit into her books I just think they're so well plotted they are really really fun they're a fun time and that is what I want when I'm reading a book so I really enjoyed this I think so far this one might be my favorite I'm not 100% sure on that one it's definitely one of my top two if not the favorite so having read Crown of Midnight there's no way I wasn't going to carry on uh, because <laughs> the ending. I moved on to Air of Fire the following day. This one was chunky. This one I rated four stars I think. The story kind of splits and you get introduced to a whole new set of characters in this book. It feels a little bit disjointed because of that but you do eventually get used to it. Again so much happened so much happens in this book and can you guess what happened after I finished Air of Fire? <laughs> I started reading Queen of Shadows because these books are so much fun I'm having such a good time this one another chunky book five stars gave it five stars absolutely loved it so much happens in this book again like I can't believe how much is crammed into this book I've read books where I'm bored for like least 70% of the book the first 70% of the book nothing happens there is stuff happening all the way through this book this again definitely top two five stars absolutely loved it some of the writing some of the sentences in this um, so many emotions I just absolutely love this the twist at the end of this very interested to know what's gonna happen next I am now on to the next two books I'm doing the tandem read and uh, yeah I'm I can't wait to read the rest of it but I'm also I'm getting to the point where I'm like oh no I'm coming near the end of the series now I don't want it to end I'm scared I'm I'm scared for the next two books like I just I've got bad feelings I've got bad feelings but I'm super excited and again if you haven't read this series if you read Akatar and you liked Akatar I think you'll definitely like these these are much more YA than Akatar but if you liked Akatar for the plot go for these these are good for the plot and I am thoroughly enjoying them and finally my last book that I managed to read in May I did manage to read Lion by Saru Brealy first chapter of this book I think the prologue is the prologue in this book the prologue in this book I cried immediately at the prologue of this book and the prologue was enough to make me so invested I was like wow I need to know what happens but then it kind of jumps back so for me I lost interest a little bit because of the jump back but then it eventually catches up to where you are in the prologue later on in the book and for some reason I got about halfway through this book and then I put it down and avoided it for several days I don't know why because the second I picked it back up I was obsessed I was obsessed so this is about Saru who lived in India and when he was five years old he got on a train with his brother but he went to the next station his brother said I've got to go do some things sit here wait for me I'll come back being a five-year-old he didn't wait he he boarded a train he then proceeded to spend over 12 hours on said train trapped on the train he couldn't get off the train um and Saru did not make it home to his family home which he had to try and find until he was in his 30s so he got lost at five years old he actually ends up in Australia and it takes him till his 30s to discover where he came from because 
he was five years old, he was uneducated, he struggled with his pronunciations and his speech, he struggled to tell people where he was from and as a result he couldn't say the name of where he was from, he wasn't pronouncing it right and so nobody could figure out where he had come from. He actually ends up lost and alone on the streets of Calcutta which is very very dangerous for a five-year-old and he's on the streets for a good time before he ends up in other places. He's written this book telling you his story, telling you what he remembers of what happened to him while he was lost and then how he managed to find his way home using Google Earth because when he first goes missing Google Earth doesn't exist. Um, eventually Google Earth becomes a thing and he manages to use that to try and find out where he came from. It takes him years and years and this goes through the whole thing from when he goes missing, how he went missing, what happened while he was missing, finding his way back to where he came from and then what happens after he finds his way back to where he came from. Absolutely bawled my eyes out in the second half of this book but I really really enjoyed it. It's a really good book, highly recommend it, it's based on a true story and I definitely want to see the film because I'm pretty sure I've seen this actor before and I know he's a good actor. This book was just fascinating. The kind of things that this child sees and experiences when he is lost and on the streets, like I can't even fathom, I cannot even fathom the things that he experiences, like even seeing them. This is an amazing story. If you like nonfiction, if you like true stories, you should definitely pick this one up. It was so, so good. I gave this one four stars. So there we have it, guys. That was everything I read in the month of May. Did you see anything that you are interested in reading? What have you been reading this month? Let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, as always, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. His speech was not... My speech is not good. <laughs>